Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to give you a practical walkthrough of how to bounce your song, your riff, your idea out of Logic Pro into a file format that you can then share with anyone, whether it be with yourself to listen on your phone or in the car, with a family member, a friend, a collaborator, or to upload via distribution to Apple Music, Spotify, and the rest. So what we're talking about is just getting the song out of the project so you can share it widely with whoever you need to. Usually WLPR videos attempt to be exhaustive in their presentation, right? I try to show you everything I can about a particular feature, a particular tool, all the nooks and crannies. Today's video, I want it to be practical. We're not gonna talk about mastering or loudness or anything like that. We're just gonna give you a step-by-step -step process. Just do this, do this, do this so you can get your song out of your project. Before we dig in though, I do wanna give a quick shout out to the many folks who have shown support to WLPR through the years, but specifically the folks who have shown direct support for WLPR over the last couple of weeks. I, for seven years now, almost seven years, have received the same email again and again and again in my inbox. And that email goes along the lines of, hey Chris, thanks so much. I love WLPR. I love what you do. I'd love to show support is there a way for me to do that? Maybe Patreon, PayPal, anything like that? And I've typically have completely shied away from this idea. Usually my response is, no, nah, it's okay. You didn't ask me to show up and do this. I like to do it. However, those emails continue to come my way. So finally I said, all right, I'll set up the tip jar in the corner. I tried out a service called Buy Me A Coffee. And then I sent an email. And many of you showed direct support. You went right to it. You threw me a couple bucks for a coffee. And that blew my mind. So I just wanted to give a specific thank you. Not, I can't name everybody's names because there's quite a few, but I'll list them in this video right now so you can see all their names. And thank you so much for showing that support. So if you want to show support for WLPR, I'll include a link down below. But with that, let's dig into it. On screen, I have a riff that I quickly slapped together. And it's not so important what the riff is, but just so we have something to listen to, let me play you the first couple bars or so. Here we go. So there's my riff and I want to share this riff with a friend. I, I kind of want to get some feedback. Maybe he wants to you know sing on it or whatever the case may be. So I need to get this riff out of Logic Pro to share with my potential collaborator. Now, if you take a look at the stereo out channel in the inspector on the left hand side, this channel currently is showing me that the level of my track is hitting at about negative 2.9. This is great, actually. It means that my track is not clipping. And by clipping, I mean that my entire project combined does not go over zero dB on the stereo output. You'll know it's clipping if this tag right here in the stereo output channel is shining red. For example, if I turn up the volume on my project pretty significantly, watch what happens. So this red tag of 1.2 is telling me that when I bounce my project out, will potentially clip. And this could result in distortion being printed into the stereo file that I'm going to share with my collaborator. So step one is ensuring that we're not gonna clip. You'll notice when I played the audio, I made sure to open the mixer so you could see what was going on in terms of processing and levels throughout the project. Now, something I notice in a lot of Logic Pro user projects is that they tend to use the stereo fader and the master fader to make volume adjustments over the project. I suspect that these users are using these faders as kind of like a volume knob, as opposed to using the volume knob on their audio interface or on their headphones. I highly recommend from here on out that you set these two faders to zero and never touch them again. I have a whole video about what these faders actually do, but you have a volume knob on your Mac speakers, on your audio interface, just use those. That's what those controls are there for because these faders right here, the stereo out and the master channel, you'll notice as I adjust this fader, you can see it adjusting the mixer. These have a direct impact on the loudness of your projects. 
So if we take a listen to the loudest section of the song now, where the drums are occurring, take a look at the tag on the stereo output channel. Cool, so we are 5.5 decibels under zero decibels. Nowhere near clipping, so we're in good shape. So step one was just setting the stereo out in the master channel strip to zero. And you can just hold option and click on these faders to automatically reset their position to their default. Step two, we're gonna load two plugins on the stereo out. The first plugin that I recommend that you load is under utility, and this is the gain plugin. The gain plugin will allow you to adjust the level of the entire project with a single knob. Take a listen and a look. And the second plugin I recommend that you load before you bounce out is under dynamics. And that's either the adaptive limiter or the limiter. And the adaptive limiter will ensure that you do not clip at all on the stereo out. I recommend that you set the out ceiling parameter to negative one decibels. Also, you probably want to enable the option for true peak detection. In this case, the adaptive limiter's entire purpose is to ensure that your project does not go over the set output ceiling. No matter how loud the project gets, your project should not exceed negative one. Now, why did I load a gain plugin before the adaptive limiter? Of course, it's to adjust the level of the project going into the adaptive limiter. While you might think that it makes a lot more sense to adjust the level of the project using the stereo out or the master faders, these are gonna wreak havoc on the overall level of your project because they occur after all your plugin processing on the stereo output. Instead, I wanna bring the project to a healthy level while ensuring my project doesn't clip. So let's give it a try. All right, you can hear there, I've gone a little too far. I've boosted by 15 decibels. And when the adaptive limiter is hit by the whole project, we're hearing a little bit of distortion. So let me back off the game plugin. Now we're seeing some reduction on the adaptive limiter. This means at certain loud moments, the mix is hitting the limiter because it's getting a little too loud. Typically it would go above negative one decibels on the stereo output, but because I have the adaptive limiter here, the mix can't go above negative one. I recommend that you don't go above one to three decibels of reduction on the adaptive limiter here. That's a healthy amount of limiting that won't result in a bunch of distortion as you heard a moment ago. And of course I could back this off a hair too, just to be safe. But now we're in really good shape to share the project. Now you might be wondering, Chris, why don't you use the gain knob on the actual adaptive limiter instead of the separate gain plugin. Well, this can actually be really helpful. If you set the out ceiling to zero, just temporarily, you can actually hear the effects of the adaptive limiter by bypassing and bringing it back. If you wanna hear, what is this thing doing without this massive level shift that would occur? Right, so it just makes it a lot easier to A, B the results if you want. Step number two is just make sure that your project isn't clipping at the stereo output level by placing a limiter on the stereo output. And because these faders right here for the master and stereo out are set to zero, they're not changing the overall level of your entire project after that limiter that you have so carefully set. Of course, if you rather use mastering assistant to tighten up your mix before you send it to a friend or a collaborator, that's fine too. In that case, I would bypass both of these and introduce Mastering Assistant. So let me set the cycle range for this entire section and let's load it. All right, so this curve is pretty squirrely for Mastering Assistant. That's A-OK. -okay. This was just a riff that I quickly laid down, but this is perfect too because Mastering Assistant will ensure that the entire mix as a whole will also not exceed negative one decibels.
Right, so however you wanna get there. If you're ready to begin mastering, you can use Mastering Assistant. If you're not, just throw a gain plugin in the adaptive limiter or your limiter of choice, and then just, you know, get that level up. Make sure you're not crossing negative one by setting the output ceiling right here to negative one. And for reduction, just look for a number of negative one to negative three. All right, now it's time to get this song out of Logic Pro to share with our friend or collaborator. The next step is to go to File, down to Bounce, Project or Section. You could also just click on the Bounce button in the Stereo Output channel. This is the Bounce dialog. Right here, you're gonna choose a couple different parameters to get your song out of Logic Pro. I have another exhaustive video all about this Bounce dialog that I'll link in the description below. But for most folks right now, there's really just one or two options that you should choose from, and that's PCM or MP3. PCM is typically the preferred option when you wanna share the untouched, lossless version of your project with someone else. Formats like MP3 actually compress the audio file. It makes it smaller. There's a little bit of degradation, but the upside of MP3 is that they're really small files that you can easily attach to an email or a text. But if you're uploading your track for distribution, if you are about to deliver the final file to a client, whether it's for songwriting or producing or mixing, PCM is definitely the preferred choice. I would suggest a file format of WAV, the bit depth of 24-bit, a sample rate of 44.1 is typical, but of course, check with the distribution that you're using for uploading to see what they specify. File type interleaved and dithering. I would set it to one of these options if you don't have a plugin on your stereo output that's already adding dithering. And you could set the start time either based on the timeline. So I could set this to maybe bar five and set the end in this case to bar 29. Or you could set the cycle range. And now this start and end time will just be based on the cycle range itself. I find that really helpful. I actually prefer to just set it based on the cycle range. And then click OK. All right, you can see my desktop is a little bit of a mess right now. We'll create a new folder called Bounces. And I'm just going to call this Beat for a friend. And click Bounce. If we now take a look at the finder here, you can see that both the MP3 and the WAV file were bounced simultaneously because I had checked both options in the bounce dialog. Right, so both were bounced simultaneously. This file would be for uploading to distribution or to share with someone basically the final file of the project. While in MP3, I would blast off to a friend or collaborator if I just want to share something quickly with them in a situation where I don't want to share a humongous file. Notice the difference in size between these two files. And lastly, you can always share a project with a friend or collaborator, either through AirDrop or through the Mail app. So if I choose AirDrop, I can choose to either share the entire project as a whole or just the song. In this case, I can share the lossless version, the uncompressed version, either as a WAV file or an AIFF or a high quality compressed file. I click share, Logic will go through the bounce process again. And now I can send to either my iPhone or my iPad or my girlfriend. Awesome, all set. Last thing, if you ever need to omit a track or a sound, because for example, let's say I have drums in this riff, but my friend wants to lay down his own drum idea. In that case, all I have to do is mute the drum track and now it won't be part of the bounce. And if we go to the finder, take a listen. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Pro Rules here on the channel, on the website, and be sure to check out the description below where I always include links to PDFs, guides, and templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care.